Hi, my name is uh, João Cabral, and I'm a professor of uh, chemical engineering at Imperial. I'll be teaching physical chemistry this year to the first year. And uh, I know these are extremely unusual circumstances, but I very much look forward to meeting you all in person and in the meantime, perhaps virtually. Um, and I wanted to tell you a little bit about the course as you are kind of getting geared up to joining us at Imperial. So I mentioned to you that I teach physical chemistry and that's an area that is close to my heart. I'm a physicist by training, even though I've been in chemical engineering for over 15 years now at Imperial. Um, the course of physical chemistry is right at the beginning of the, the chemical engineering degree and uh, at lo alongside uh, chemistry, fluid mechanics, uh, process analysis, and so forth. And these are kind of core courses that we feel every chemical engineer should have initially in their first year. The course starts uh, with a bit of physics, so it will appeal to many of you who've perhaps played physics at A-levels or uh, IB or equivalent, because it, uh, it starts with uh, waves, and uh, really the reason why classical mechanics perhaps does not, uh, as we say, cut the mustard in terms of describing uh, the world at the small sort of molecular and atomic scales. That is, it doesn't quite describe everything that we observe at those small scales. We know quantum mechanics is a, is a domain of physics that is relatively recent in the big scheme of things. It's uh, about 100 years old now uh, and uh, keeps evolving in many ways. And um, it's underpinned by the idea that uh, we can't quite know everything as we do in classical mechanics. So you can't quite know the trajectory in the future and in the past of a given particle, knowing where it is and all its forces. So you need to use pro probabilities and waves, and there's this famous Schrodinger equation. So that's how the course starts. It starts with uh, um, a bit of background in physics, of uh, sort of classical physics that you have from GCSEs and A-levels. And, and uh, for those of you who haven't studied physics, that's really not a problem at all, because we will cover the basics for everyone, so that we make sure that everyone can enjoy and benefit from the course in full. And then we go from the idea that uh, matter at the tiny scales start manifesting sometimes the behavior as waves, sometimes as particles. So we talk about the, the wave particle duality. We introduced the many important features of the 20th century who have played a significant role in the understanding that we today have of um, what we call, uh, I guess, atomic and molecular physics. And then we'll, we'll start with describing um, the, the, the tiniest particles all the way into the more complex sort of toolbox until we can reach the atom and molecules. So then at this point, we can discuss how molecules, for example, move about in space. So molecules can potentially translate, they could rotate as well. They could perhaps um, um, vibrate if they have chemical bonds. And these have very interesting features. That's the way molecules have to store energy and to then exchange energy with the outside. And uh, so we'll eventually, why do we need a course of physical chemistry in chemical engineering? That's because when we talk about macroscopic properties like the viscosity, like the heat capacity, so the ability to store energy, like um, heat transfer, then we kind of need to know where does that come from, from a, at the molecular level. What is viscosity? You can think of it as uh, water being perhaps uh, exhibiting a low viscosity and honey, for example, being viscous, but what is it at the molecular scale that causes it? And the reason we care is because if we know the molecular basics, then we can, we can design materials uh, or, and processes to suit our requirements. It's also important for us to understand the carbon cycle, to understand the importance of renewals and emission gases, and uh, to understand a lot of the pieces in the course in chemistry about the formation of molecules. What is the wave nature of, for example, electrons that permits bonds to form and for molecules to assume one shape, perhaps a linear shape, uh, compared to perhaps a round shape like in a, uh, or a ring shape like in a benzene ring? 
or for example we need to know why for example uh, this, this fluid coming down a pipe will have a given velocity profile that looks a bit like a bullet like a parabola where does that come from where is that molecular basis for what we observe at a large scale similarly when we design for example a heat exchanger let's say that you are thinking of a chemical process and you want to cool something up or 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 sorry heat something up or cool something down, you kind of need to know what is responsible for that storage of energy and that exchange of energy. So in the course, we'll come all the way from the, the, the tiniest scale, that is a nanometer or so 10 to the minus nine meters or even smaller, one angstrom, which is 10 to the minus 10 meters, and we'll come all the way to the macro scale through initially what we call quantum mechanics, and then what we call statistical mechanics. And why statistical? Because we are dealing with huge numbers of molecules of the order of, of, the order of Avogadro's number, if you remember that from uh, secondary school. So 10 to the 23, these are huge numbers of molecules. And uh, we kind of need statistics to understand why they collectively behave in a, in a given way, even though individually they might be each of them sort of minding their own business. And so um, the course is, is uh, relatively brief for its scope, if you wish. So it has uh, 25 lectures and it has a quite a large scope. And, um, and so it will require us to attend the lectures, of course, and, uh, and perhaps listen carefully, ask questions, maybe on a chat or in presence, of course, uh, in just by interrupting me whenever it's appropriate. But also, it will require independent study of you, from your part, of course. And the book we use is uh, something called Atkins Physical Chemistry. It's kind of the Bible of physical chemistry that is used in many universities around the world. So we felt, uh, well, that's a good basis so that uh, you, if you're ever going to buy a book or, or uh, access online a book, maybe this is a good one to start with. We will also have tutorials, and that will be with really talented PhD students and postdocs who will be guiding you to solving problems that's such that the course doesn't become abstract and we know how to apply it in practice. And we'll also have uh, office hours. That's when kind of I have my office door open and you can come in and ask me questions about sort of anything. And uh, when I mean anything, I really mean it in the sense that there, this is quite an abstract uh, course, which is a lot of fun. So there are no dumb questions and uh, often the more creative questions are quite challenging and I find them quite challenging because the topic is itself kind of uh, um, challenging since it's it's uh, not one for which we have intuition from the macroscopic scale. The rules kind of break down when you go to the atomic scales. And so we'll have these office hours that happen once a week where you can ask questions uh, at, at your wish. We'll normally take turns when uh, when uh, we go through these. We'll be solving problems together both um, online on this uh, on probably on a virtual platform for the beginning of the course and then hopefully eventually in uh, in person as the, the hopefully the situation improves and, and we can uh, resume kind of our sort of normal activities. I think you will enjoy the course. Certainly I enjoy teaching this course very much. And um, I can tell you that uh, for those of you who did physics, this will be quite familiar to you. So initially you'll think, okay, I've kind of seen this or at least some of this before. And so if you do, just bear with me because I think it will, it will catch up with you quite, quite quickly. For those of you who haven't studied physics uh, at uh, maybe a higher level, then as I say, also bear with me because you'll, you'll catch up quickly and we can have these office hours where you can ask me questions or if there are specific bits that you'd like uh, perhaps to brush up upon, then I can also set up some revision classes for to cover those. So in the meantime, I really hope you're enjoying the last stretch of holidays in this uh, month of September. And um, I very much look forward to seeing you within a couple of weeks at Imperial. Until then, have a rest of a good summer. Bye now.